All right, guys, today we're going to be talking about the demographic transition model or the demographic transition theory. Um, remember that this is a theory, so there are some flaws. And as you have found that since the publish of your book in 2008, you actually will find that a stage five has been added. Um, for a while, it was a little bit hypothetical because the belief was that the DTM was irreversible. Once you moved forward from stage one to two to three to four, uh, you could not actually move backward. However, with the addition of stage five, there is the possibility of moving back from stage five to stage four. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, and in a way, I think that probably it will end with sort of a cyclical movement between stages four and five. Overall, the DTM was created in order to explain the transition in demographics over time. Most countries starting with the replacement of the high birth and death rates in all areas of the world, with some countries moving forward and being replaced by low birth and low death rates over time. Now, not every country is going to go through the demographic transition model in the same manner, uh, in the same years as well. And usually when we look at this shift from stage one all the way across to stage four, uh, the more industrialized your country is, the more likely you are to be in stage four, uh, the more likely you are to be more of a traditional tribal area, um, probably agricultural um, as your main source of income and really survival, you're more likely to be stuck in stage two. Um, there are some exceptions and we'll talk about a few of those, but that's generally the case. Uh, the higher the standard of living, the more likely you are to be in stage four or five. Again, that's going to include healthcare, education, sanitation, et cetera. And when we look at all four stages, okay, they, are, can, they can be characterized by the types of birth and death rates as well as the type of population growth at the time. Stage one is going to be a time of very low growth, but we're going to have both high birth and death rates. Stage two is transitional. This is the major change where most of the population growth is going to occur. Your birth rates do not change. Um, they are not going to increase and they're really not going to decrease very much, but the death rate is going to plummet, thereby causing um, a higher life expectancy and the population of the world to increase. Uh, stage three is going to be moderate rates, so you do have a little bit of growth there. And then stage four is when the birth rates and the death rates are going to level out, and you're going to have very little growth. If you look at this model, um, this is probably the best example out there right now. If we're looking at all five stages, you'll notice that stage five after okay, stage four reaching pretty much ZPG. And then when we're looking at ZPG, if you can see, it's actually right in that area. Um, ZPG is where, of course, your CBR and your CDR are going to okay, subtract to equal zero. Um, that ZPG, though, is actually being replaced in some countries with this natural decrease where the birth rate is actually plunging underneath the death rate. Um, this is what we would call a natural decrease instead of a natural increase. If you remember, this is the natural increase rate. This is going to be your CBR and subtracting your CDR. And you'll see that just for an example, in stage two, which is where you have the most growth, you'll notice that a uh, CBR of 40 per 1,000 and about a 15 per 1,000, if you were to subtract those two, you would find that you're going to have a high uh, natural increase rate okay, of a 25. Okay, the 25, of course, can't be 25%. It's actually going to be a 2.5. And that, again, is a very, very high natural increase rate. Remember, the highest uh, today is in Niger with about a 3.8, which is exceptionally high. Um, you are going to find, though, on the stage 5 side that there is going to be a natural decrease rate. And this is where your CBR minus CDR is actually going to equal a negative number. Let's talk a little bit about when each country moves from one stage to another. If we're looking at countries that move from stage one to stage two, you have to understand first that everybody begins in stage one. Stage one is really from the beginning of time all the way up until for MDCs, the 1750s, 1790s, 1800s, anywhere around the Industrial Revolution. Um, of course, remember the uh, Industrial Revolution is going to begin in Great Britain. It will spread to the United States from there into Western Europe, and this is going to cause changes in your death rate. The death rate was exceptionally high in stage one because of several factors, but mostly due to famine, lack of food, or disease. And again, a lot of that has to do with sanitation, 
okay, and um, access to clean water. That death rate, however, is going to plummet in stage two, and that's because the Industrial Revolution is going to bring about farming um, production that's going to improve things like um, a double yolk, a um, seed drill, cotton gin, uh, just really plows, things like that, organic fertilizer, nothing that we would consider really life altering today. However, this is going to change the amount of food that's going to be produced, which means that famine is no longer going to be um, a source of death as it once was in stage one. Additionally, once people begin to move into the city, sanitation is also going to improve. Uh, they begin to understand the need for clean water. Additionally, um, for antiseptics, okay, this is going to be the time really of the scientific revolution. Okay, additionally, think about um, the industrial revolution, all of the changes that are going to improve okay, our standard of living during that time period. If we're looking at the birth rates, however, your birth rates in stage one, again, exceptionally high for a couple reasons. One of those, of course, is that children in stage one uh, are going to actually be economically fruitful. They should actually be helpful. Think about um, hunters and gatherers up until the year 8000 BC. 8000 BC, people are going to start running, um, instead of running around chasing animals and nomadic hunting, um, people are actually going to settle down. You're going to have agriculture. And the more children you have, the more food that you are able to gather. The same goes, though, for nomadic herding and hunting and gathering. The more children you have, the more workers you have. Another reason for high birth rates is that you have an exceptionally high infant mortality rate. If, for example, one out of every 10 child die, uh, children die before the age of one, you're going to have to have potentially 10, 11, 12 babies in order for 10 to survive. Again, the more babies you have, the more economically um, advantageous it is. Other reasons for the really high birth rate is traditional roles of women. Um, women being okay, those who are um, giving birth, really taking care of the home. Additionally, there is no um, real ex ex idea of family planning. There's no contraception. There's no birth control. And culturally, it is ideal to have a large family in stage one um, countries. So think about every civilization all the way through the Greeks, the Romans, I want you to think about um, the Americas, think about ancient China, and then actually start to move into more um, of what we'd call recent okay, history. And those are going to be things like uh, really the Revolutionary War. Um, if you think back to the Middle Ages, okay, the Black Plague occurs here. And the Black Plague is just going to be like a little bit of a blip, a high period of the death rate, but not enough to actually significantly change stage one for anyone. Um, when we move into stage two, okay, your more developed countries of the world move into stage two, like I said, around 1800, the birth rate's really going to stay the same because for the most part, people are going to remain in the country. Therefore, children are advantageous. Even once they move to the cities, they are still going to have a lot of children um, because that's always been sort of what they've done in the past. It's not until really stage three that they start to realize that children are economically expensive and you actually have to live with all of them in the city. So at first it's going to remain really high. Um, additionally, your birth rate is going to remain high because the roles of women are not going to change that drastically. Again, women are going to stay at home. They're going to actually be okay, in charge of the household. And so giving birth um, is pretty normal. Your average age of marriage in stage one and two, okay, pretty young. So therefore you're extending the number of years okay, in which someone, uh, a woman would be in her childbearing years. And additionally, um, your infant mortality rate has not been realized yet. As the death rate drops, your infant mortality rate will also drop, which I think everybody would agree is a good thing. However, if you had 11 to 12 children because you thought that one or two would not survive past the age of one, once you reach stage two and the death rate drops, those one or two, okay, Jimmy and Susie, may actually end up surviving when you thought that they may not. So now those are extra mouths to feed. Um, a couple of those okay, things, though, of course, are going to keep us in that high birth rate area in stage two, uh, along with the lack of access to birth control. When we look at the MDCs of the world moving into stage three, a lot of these are going to happen in the early 1900s um, up until about the 1950s, 1960s. Um, and really, those early 1900s is where your birth rate is going to drop. 
Your birth rate begins to drop, particularly when people start to move into the urban areas. As they move into urban areas, children can no longer be sent out to go gather food, and instead children are sent out to go to school. And because of that, they're not providing food for your family, and instead they actually are demanding food from your family. So now you actually have to be that much more productive in order to provide for your children. The more children you have, of course, the more economically, okay, um, really uh, you're going to be strained. So as um, people started to see that, they also saw that they were having to live with the children um, in the cities, especially once people first started moving to the cities during really the Industrial Revolution. You're going to have um, families of 9, 10, 11 children living in two-bedroom households um, and really being cramped in. Um, things, obviously, resources are going to be okay, in demand. Um, and if you are a sibling of one of those 9 or 10 okay, children, you probably will decide that once you get older, you will not have 9 or 10 children. Um, additionally, education is going to improve. The longer that people are in education, the shorter the time period of years that they're probably going to be in the childbearing age. Um, for example, if you go to school until you're 16, you get married at 16, that's going to increase the likelihood of you having more children than someone who, say, would go to school until they're 18. Um, additionally, at the very end of stage three, you're going to see that the birth rate really plummets quite a bit. Okay, and in stage four, this is when you're really going to have from the 1970s onward, this dip in the birth rate is going to be caused by a couple factors. One of which, of course, okay, continued urban living, which means that children are still expensive. Additionally, the improvement of women's roles, um, particularly in that of going to secondary education, post-secondary education, delaying marriage, and after World War II, a lot of women, particularly after the 1960s, are going to start to demand um, full-time positions okay, outside the home. Um, as soon as that happens, of course, gay birth rates are going to plummet as well. Other things uh, that are going to cause a birth rate to plummet is women's control over um, how many children they choose to have. And that is going to come in the form of birth control, um, contraception use, and actually the birth control pill in the 1970s. If you look okay, in stage three, your death rate is going to plummet okay, just a little bit further, but then it really starts to level off. Um, remember that the death rate in stage two falling is because of sanitation and advanced farming. The death rate okay, dropping just a little bit further in stage three is because of modern medicine. Um, again, vaccinations. Um, uh, I would say modern day surgeries um, and, and really just an improved overall idea of um, health. That can't continue to drop though. Um, if you think about it, okay, your birth rate um, can continue to drop okay, to the point where it equals zero, but our death rate really can't um, because of course everybody dies at some point. So the death rate is going to level off and in stage three we have what is called a moderate growth rate. There's still some growth. If you look at the CBR and the CDR, you have about a 30 and additionally you have about a 15 or a 10 at some point. So by the time you get done with K stage three, you're actually gonna see a much lower level of growth, but it's still there. Stage four, your death rate has stabilized, okay? Your birth rate, as I mentioned, because of social factors and social customs, okay, has actually gotten to the point where it has potentially met that crude death rate. Um, when they meet, of course, that's going to be called ZPG, zero population growth. And keep in mind that a total fertility rate of a 2.1 is necessary in order for you to reach ZPG. As we move into stage five, and this was always a hypothetical stage, you'll see that the birth rate has actually plunged below the death rate. This is happening in countries where culturally um, the need for children um, has actually diminished as women's roles have increased. Uh, women are becoming managerial positions, uh, they're actually becoming full-time CEOs, things of that nature, and there's little interest in having children. Um, additionally, it's incredibly expensive to live in these urban areas and people are wanting to spend their hard-earned money on themselves. Uh, this is causing areas like Germany, um, Japan, Singapore, Hong Kong to actually have fewer children 
then okay, there are the number of people that are dying. This is actually going to cause your natural decrease rate or what we would call negative growth. Um, this is going to be our declining period. We don't know if it's going to continue to decline or whether or not it will actually cycle back into stage four. Perhaps they understand that they need to improve their birth rate um, and increase it, which would then cause them to move back into stage four. Okay, but then again, you can also go down and move back into stage five. Um, so it's likely that there's going to be some cycles, okay, between four and five. Keep in mind all of the countries, okay, that would be in, e be in each stage. And additionally, um, stay tuned for...